starring Bob Hope and his special guest, Herbert Marshall. It's only paper moon sailing over cardboard sea, but it wouldn't be make believe if you believed in me. Yes, it's only a canvas sky hanging over a muslin tree, but it wouldn't be make believe if you believed in me. Now you're now, it's a honky tonk parade. Without your love, it's a melody play in a penny arcade. It's a fun and invading world, just as phony as it can be. But it wouldn't be make believe if you believed in me. Phoenix is located in the southern part of the state, except on windy days. <laughs> and this is a great city. You know, Crosby owns a string of filling stations in this state. You can always tell them. The flying red horse is leaning against a post. <laughs> but, this, but this is really the old west. The minute we hit town, there was a quick exchange of shots. The musicians had found the bar. We had a nice trip to Arizona. We came up by bus. It's cheaper than surgery. <laughs> it was a nice bus. You know those big greyhounds? Well, this one looked like it had refused to eat its red heart. <laughs> no use talking. I got to stop buying jokes for my butcher. I won't say the bus was old, but a few miles this side of the border, it stopped, and General Custer got off and said, which way did they go? And I won't say it's crowded on those buses, but it's the only time I ever rode in a bus where the driver had to steer it by running along outside and kicking the front wheel. <laughs> Everybody was so jammed in when we got off, Skinny Ennis was wearing Kelowna's mustache, Kelowna was walking with my feet, and I was wearing Francis Langford's false eyelashes. And boy, what a reckless driver. The speedometer didn't bother to register the speed. It just sat there shrugging its needle. They had those new reclining seats. You know, you just lean back, push your button, and the next thing you know, the guy in back of you is in front of you. Any questions? <laughs> but I think I tilted my seat back a little too far. A little boy was sitting in back of me, and he kept dropping jelly beans down my nose. <laughs> and his father wouldn't let me keep them. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of petrified forests in Arizona. This is the only place in the country where the woodpeckers lay pebbles. <laughs> proud of their health record here. In fact, the last time Sinatra wanted to come down here, the Chamber of Commerce met up at the border and stamped his forehead tourists before they'd let him in. <laughs> it's so healthy around here, the newspapers don't have obituary columns. If someone dies here, they just list them under the lost and not likely to be found ad. They think of Skinny Ennis around here, but a couple of guys took a look at him today, and one said to the other, Listen, Joe, we'll have to quit burying the bodies in that loose sand. <laughs> Take it, Joe. Here comes Skinny. 
ಸಿಬ್ಬಂದಿಯರು I've been in heaven since the day I found you. It's really heaven with my arms around you. Just a little fond affection cheers me when I'm feeling blue. Just a little love, a little affection, dear, from you. Just a little fond affection Cheers me when I'm feeling blue Just a little love A little affection With you Uh, that was Skinny Ennis, the poor man's Gregory Wreck. Yes, sir. The only man I know who makes a living out of asthma. Well, how do you like Arizona, Skin? Oh, it's well, Bob, but they've sure got strict agricultural laws there. I almost didn't get across the border. What do you mean? Well, I was wearing a green sweater, and they thought it was an asparagus tip. <laughs> yes. Skin, you should have stuck your chest out. And I did. They won't let any avocados in either. <laughs> Now that you're in Arizona, why don't you buy yourself some Western garb? I did, Bob. The first thing when we arrived, I went out and bought myself a 10-gallon hat. Skin, you're going to wear a 10-gallon hat? Man, who said anything about wearing it? I'm going to move into it. <laughs> yes, sir. And you can take sun baths on the brim. Hello, Bob. Hi, Skin. Well, Francis Langford, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, yeah. West, isn't it, Bob? Yes, sir, Francis. This is the West where men are men and the women are women, and they haven't figured out a way to put a tax on it yet. <laughs> but it really is wonderful here, isn't it, Bob? Oh, I don't know. What's the matter? Couldn't you get a date? What do you mean? I had a date, but I gave her the brush. The papoose on her back kept picking my pocket. <laughs> hey, Bob, what happened to you after we left the station? You disappeared. Well, I went up to the Indian reservation. Really? How'd you make out? Did you sell all your blankets? Yes. Yes, but the moccasins didn't go over very good. I'll have to use a finer needle on my beadwork. But I did all right selling those victory bonds here in uh, Phoenix this afternoon. Yes, I saw you talking to that redhead, but I didn't think much of your salesmanship. Why, I was just explaining about the 2%. <laughs> yes, but you were showing the wrong kind of interest. Well, why not? I haven't reached maturity yet. <laughs> Mentally. <laughs> thought I'd get that in there before you did. By, by the way, Bob, is Professor Colonna here with us in Arizona? Yes, Francis. I sent the professor out to take some snapshots of the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon? Yeah, that's where Superman forgot to replace a divot. <laughs> I'll get it. Hello? Listen, when Bob Hope comes in, tell him Professor Colonna is sick in bed with a temperature of 120. A temperature of 120, no man in his right man would believe that. that. Well, let's, let's not quibble about the obvious. This story is designed for Bob Hope. <laughs> Professor, this is Bob Hope. Well, I was getting tired of radio anyway. <laughs> but, Corona, are you at the Grand Canyon? Yes, but I can't see it very well. Can't see the canyon? How come? Well, it's way down at the bottom of a big hole in the ground. <laughs> Uh, 
Colonna, get busy and take some pictures of that country, will you? Uh, one minute, Hope. I think I have a beautiful shot. A real Hope I Pinto pony. A real Hope I Pinto pony? <laughs> what was that? Pinto just had a pinto. <laughs> I'll, I'll see how this picture comes out, Hope, and call you back. Roger, over and out. <laughs> Boy, that Colonna would make a great cowboy. He carries his own wide open spaces with him in his head. You think you'd like to be a cowboy out here, Bob? Not me, Francis. Those longhorns look dangerous. How'd they ever get such longhorns anyway? I really don't know, but don't brood about it, Bob. Yours has a much cuter twist in it. <laughs> well, it saves buying a shoehorn anyway. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Hope. Say, tell me, Hope, uh, do California slugs work in Arizona telephones? Yes, they do, Kelowna. See, operator, there's your man. Are you still at the Grand Canyon? Yes, and I can't understand it, Hope. They only charge a quarter to look at it. For a, ho for a hole that big, they ought to get at least a dollar. Well, how do you figure that out, Colonna? Well, I get 50 cents for the one in my head. <laughs> you mean you actually charge people 50 cents to look in the hole in your head? Well, that's just a look. If they want to take a goldfish home with them, it costs them an extra quarter. <laughs> Isn't that right, honey? Colonna, have you got a girl with you there? Well, yes, I have. Hope she's lovely. Her hair is just like the setting sun. Her eyes sparkle like the stars at night. And her voice, ah, uh, her voice. Put her on the phone. This I gotta hear. Hello there. <laughs> well, you can't have everything. <laughs> Say, come again. I think a Boy Scout was rubbing those wires together. Hello, how are you, Mr. Hope? I found her here at the Grand Canyon. Be more specific, Colonna. Under which rock? Colonna, come over right away and bring that girl with you. I gotta see that. Well, we're on our way, Hope. <laughs> well, Kelowna, introduce me to your girlfriend. Oh, this is Raspy. Yes, they named me after Rasputin. Believe me, the resemblance doesn't end there. <laughs> Say, did you always have that voice, or did you forget to close your mouth during an Arizona sandstorm? <laughs> well, anyway, the professor likes me. Of course, Hope, we, we get along very well. You do? Yes, the frog in the throat likes to jump through my mustache. Can you say that? I have a lovely voice. Oh, do you sing? Sing? Listen to this. Kiss me once and kiss me twice. It's been a long, long time. It's been a long, long time. It's been a long, long... Shorten it for it, didn't I? Capture the 
summertime rapture we knew. And from that day, nevermore will I say, there's no you. The park that we walked in, the garden we talked in, how long can they seem in the fall? The stormy clouds cover and falling leaves cover our favorite nook in the wall in spring. We'll meet again, we'll kiss and recapture the summertime rapture we knew. And from that day, to present a charming British gentleman who has lent his suave touch to many a successful picture and has done likewise with many of our programs. Here he is, Herbert Marshall. Thank you. Thank you very much. And there was quite a build-up you gave me there, Bob. Oh, I always do that. It gives the show class. Well, Bart, are you enjoying your stay here in Arizona as much as we are? Yes, and you should take advantage of it, Bob. You know, you're in pretty bad condition. What do you mean, bad condition? Well, just look at those circles under your eyes. Are they bad? Bad. Your nose looks like it's playing shuffleboard. <laughs> Bart. Bart, those aren't circles under my eyes. It's that cheap mascara I've been using. But you're looking great, Bart. Well, yes, I've been putting a lot of time on my dude ranch down here. By the way, thanks for letting me stay at your ranch. Oh, it's nothing, Bob. Well, I appreciate it a lot. How did you come to think of inviting me out to your place? Oh, it occurred to me the other morning, Bob, when I looked out my window and saw your trailer parked in the yard. <laughs> well, I have to have some place to carry my sample cases. But, Bart, your ranch isn't really typical. I could tell it was owned by an Englishman. How, Bob? I milked one of the cows and got a bucket full of orange pico. Well, I certainly enjoyed staying at your place, Bart. Everything is so informal. I love going downstairs in the morning and having breakfast before I get dressed. Yes, I'm going to speak to you about that, Bob. Don't you think that's a little too informal? How do you mean too informal? I always have a bathrobe when I come downstairs. Yes, I know you do, Bob, but don't you think you should wear it? <laughs> Are you kidding? If I do that, I can't take it back to Goldwater's. Bob will hit me with a mash here or something. Right. But that ranch life is wonderful. Every morning at 6 o'clock, I sat down at the breakfast table. Yes, and every morning at 10 o'clock, you got up from the breakfast table. Well, I like to take a walk before lunch, you know. <laughs> and incidentally, Bob, your table manners are awful. Oh, you shouldn't get mad, Bart. I was only eating cowboy style. Yes, but you still use cutlery. You don't take off your spur and use it as fork, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, Herb, but I tried being like the other cowboys. I even tried rolling a cigarette with one hand. How did it turn out? Perfect, but I couldn't smoke it. Why not? I couldn't get my finger out. <laughs> Incidentally, Bart, I didn't get much sleep there at night with all that howling. Well, it's your own fault, Bob. You could have slept. What do you mean? Well, those are coyotes. You're not supposed to howl back. <laughs> See, you mean I haven't got a date tomorrow night after all? <laughs> but, Bart, you're getting to be a regular cowboy now, aren't you? Yep. I remember just last week, my foreman, Tex, and I were out on the range. Hey, Bart. I want to drink my java from an old tin pan While the moon is shining high I want to hear the call of the whippoorwill I want to hear those carols cry Oh, this city, city life and these city, city ways, ways are driving me insane. insane. <laughs> well, you take me back. I, I want to go, go back, back, back on the Texas place. 
We mean Arizona. Ha, 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 ha. Those Arizona planes. Well, come on, Tex. Let's go look over the herd. Okay, partner, what'll it be this time? The Biltmore or the Wigwam in? <laughs> now, on second thought, let's knock off a cactus sandwich. I need the roughage. Say, you're really a rootin' tootin' cowboy, ain't you, Tex? Sure am. It's in my blood. Runs in my family. You mean your father was a cowboy, too? No, he was a chorus boy in Oklahoma. <laughs> he was a chorus boy in Oklahoma. Might as well let the balcony here, too, huh? <laughs> it's a shame you ain't as tough as I am. I hear you got thrown out of the saloon last night. What was you doing? Chewing tobacco. They threw you out for chewing tobacco? Yeah. I tried to blow a smoke ring. <laughs> well, you should take me with me with you when you go into those places. <laughs> you ought to try it anyway. You know, two gun, I'm the toughest cowboy in these here parts. You're the toughest cowboy in these parts? Then how come you can't ride a horse? That ain't the part I'm tough in. <laughs> I'm, come on, I'm taller than saddles till my calluses break. Yes, I. <laughs> come on, Tex. Let's go check on the herd. I'm right with you. Wait a minute. There's some rustling going around here. Rustling? Can't understand that two gun. I ain't. <laughs> I ain't kidding, Tex. Somebody stole one of my cows and cut it up into steaks. No kidding. The fellow who did this is a bold, desperate rustler. How do you know he's a bold, desperate rustler? Well, look at the message he left. Nuts to you, spelled out in silly minions. <laughs> well. What are we waiting for, Tex? Which way do the rustlers go? I don't know, but never mind. We'll just follow my nose. I couldn't. The other two would kill me. <laughs> Come on, Tex. The trail goes this way. Let's, uh, let's follow. Hey, Tugan, I'm getting tired. Let's stop and wait for the horses. <laughs> Here they come. Let's get on. Huh? You have a mighty funny way of riding a horse, Tex. Well, it may look funny, Tugan, but it's sure nice and shady under here. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder which way them wrestlers went. Look, Tex, them Russell cattle is smart. They left a trail of milk. Yeah, bright little squirts, weren't they? <laughs> hey, Two Gun, we must be pretty close to the rustler now. Too close. Put up your hands. Reach. Okay. I got my hands up. Reach higher. Higher. I can't reach any higher. My feet are off the ground now. <laughs> it's a gown, Tex. Gee, I wish my hair was combed. <laughs> Thanks. You're the rustler, huh? Yes, Cactus Sue. I'll steal anything that walks on all fours. Two gun, get up off your knees. <laughs> yeah, I got her. I'm going to slip the cuffs on her. Watch out, Tex. She's, she's toting 38. Yeah, she's got guns, too. look like rough, tough cowboys to me. We don't, huh? Well, gal, you've heard of the James brothers, haven't you? Yes. Well, meet the Dolly sisters. <laughs> Come on. Come on, we're taking you in, sister. Now, don't make any false moves, boys. I'm a pistol-packing mama. Watch that pistol. Yeah, and I'm watching that packing, too. <laughs> but I ain't afraid of no rustler. I'll shoot it out with you. Tex, you don't know what you're doing. This is Cactus Sue, the best shot in the West. I ain't afraid of her. I'm a pretty good shot myself. See that bird in that tree? Looks pretty up there, don't he? <laughs> Tell you what, ma'am. Tell you what, I'm a sport. I'll let you go if you give me a kiss. Okay, it's a deal. Here. Well, how was it, Tex? I think I found something to replace the branding iron. <laughs> Herbert Marshall for another fine job. Here comes Francis.
Francis Langford, right here. If I loved you, time and again I would try to say. Longing to tell you, but afraid and shy. 